Hey guys, in this topic we are going to be looking at ways to edit Excel physics. If you want to follow along and want loads and loads of questions on this topic, you can get that in a free vision guide which you can download from my website. Here we have our longitudinal wave where we have areas of compression. and areas of refraction. We can measure the wavelength in this from one point to another point. The direction of movement is side to side. And so it's the direction of energy. A transverse wave goes up and down. From one point to another point, and this doesn't matter whether it's from the top to the bottom, from the middle to the middle, we have the wavelength. The amplitude is measured from the middle to the top or from the middle to the bottom. The direction of movement for this is up and down. This could also be the direction of oscillation. And the direction of energy transfer is sideways. Frequency is the number of waves per second. So if we look at this block here as a second in time, something that will have a low frequency, we are not going to see many peaks in one second. But something that had a high frequency, we would see lots of peaks or lots of waves within one second. You'll notice that for the high frequency one, it has a low wavelength, whereas for the low frequency one, it has a high or a long wavelength. If we want to measure the speed of a wave, we can use a ripple tank. Um, this here will go in and out of the water, creating waves. From this, we can measure wavelength and also looking at how many waves pass a certain point in a second frequency. Then we can use our equation um, to work out the speed of the wave. V equals F times lambda. To work out the speed of a wave, wave speed, we can take the frequency and times it by the wavelength. Our units for speed are in meters per second. Frequency is in hertz, capital H, lowercase z, and wavelength is in meters. We can use echo or ultrasound to determine distance, and we can do that because speed equals distance over time. So if we know the speed of the wave, we can measure the time taken and we can calculate the distance. So um, a vessel exploring the sea can send down um, an ultrasound and measure the time it takes to come back. And the time it takes to come back will be shorter or longer depending on the distance. Now the really, really important thing to um, note here is that it is there and back again. So the time is double um, what it would be. Because the time it takes to get there and back is twice just the time it takes to get there. So if you have an echo and ultrasound um, calculation, you need to find distance. You need to think logically about the time calculation that you're using. Ultrasounds can also be used for medical imaging. Here is my massive bump. Here was my massive baby. And you can see the hard parts 
the jaw, the skull, the legs, they are going to reflect the ultrasound much more than the liquid or the soft tissue parts. When a wave is reflected, it is going to come in, meet the boundary and then be reflected off. Our angle of incidence is always going to be equal to our angle of reflection. So we can always say that I equals R. Your normal line is in the middle here. It is a dashed line and it is drawn at 90 degrees to the mirror or the surface that the wave is being reflected off. If we have a sound wave instead of a light wave that is being reflected, we are going to get an echo. Refraction happens when a wave passes from one medium into another medium, say from air into glass or air into water, and it will change direction. So here is our normal here, move it down to here. Um, it will change direction as it goes through there. And the reason it changes direction is because the wave changes speed, but different parts of the wave change speed at different points. So this part down here that hits um, first is going to change speed, either getting faster or slower before this part of the wave up here, which hasn't changed uh, medium or speed yet. A sound wave is a longitudinal wave. It vibrates the air particles. And your eardrum in here will pick up the vibration of the air particles and turn it into sound which your brain can interpret. The range of human hearing is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz.